YouTube, it's Lana the Ladybird's teacher. Today is Sunday the 6th of June and I'm here for an update. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope everyone's had a really good month and I hope everyone's well. Um, so today I've got, I'm going to go through Mirabilia May. Um, I did, I worked on three Mirabilias during May and I spent the last week working on the Templar Prophecy, which is my monthly the one that i use the one that i work on every month i've also got the start of june um which i've worked on my full coverage pieces and one that i haven't worked on in a long time so we'll go through all that i've got quite a bit of haul and slash um stitchy kindness to show you as well because i went on a retreat and i'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more later on i don't think that made sense but i think i know what you mean you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so I'm a little bit late this month. Um, it's the first time since last week that I've been not working and had the house to myself. So I'm taking the opportunity to film a video now. Uh, my husband took my daughter to, she's been doing swimming lessons since she was about three in a heated pool. It's quite, quite cool here today. Um, and uh she's she's becoming really quite good at it and really enjoying it and today's not a swimming lesson but they've gone to check out a heated pool which is near us um i don't swim i'm not a swimmer i'm a very indoor person um and yeah that's their daddy daughter day so they'll be gone for a couple of hours she was really really excited um so yeah, so I've got a couple of hours and I thought I'd make the most of it. Um, okay, so first, because of the way the pile is sitting, it looks like everything's about to fall over. Um, I'm not going to go in any particular order, but it looks like I've got the most recent things I worked on on top <laughs> and the last things um, or the things that I worked on further ago <laughs> on the bottom. So these are in no particular order, but... Um, the first thing I've got in front of me is one you haven't seen for a long, long time. Boy King Tutankhamun by Janelin. So this one, I have tried to UFO it. It just keeps, it just keeps coming back. I don't really want it to go unfinished. So I've decided to finish it and it is in my Wit Go goals. And this month it came up as uh, one of the blocks that I should work on. And the goal is to finish it. That That's the block. Um, I don't have that much to do. I'll show you what it looked like the last time I showed last time I showed it to you. And I haven't done much since then, but I've done I've worked a little bit here. There isn't that much to do. It's just here and then I've got to do the back stitching. I've got this beautiful needle minder that my friend Tash gave me a couple of years ago, which I really love. Um, not that much to do, but what I've decided to do is to put in at least one length of thread every single day in June. And what I'm trying to do is on the weekends to double that. So do two lengths of thread. Uh, I haven't worked on this at all today yet, but throughout June I have been working on it so there's a little bit up here as well that I've worked on and I'm hoping that will at least get me to the to the point where I'm ready to backstitch um, I have left the backstitching until last for this one I haven't done any yet I don't think it's too bad there in that it's there is quite a bit of backstitching but it's quite straightforward there's it's not too intricate so it should be okay I don't know if I'll finish it by the end of June, but at least I'll get close. Um, and that's that's really what I want to do. So yeah, like I said, I have tried to UFO that a couple of times. It just it just wants to come back. And I do want to finish it. I've finished its matching one, Nefertiti, and I might put a photo in here of what that one looks like. These are very old. I don't think they're still in print, but um, yeah, I think I should finish it. And I don't know whether I'll hang it up, but I just want it to be done. That's just a feeling I have. So I don't want it 
to sit in a drawer not done okay the next one i worked on is cinderella on the stairs by heaven and earth designs and here's what it will look like when it's finished and here's what it looked like the last time you saw it and here it is now none of these are ironed i'm sorry i don't iron uh, unless i absolutely have to so this one um this was a whip go goal a couple of months ago i think uh where i had i was supposed to finish this page and as you can see i'm not not quite there yet and what i'm doing with this one is 100 stitches a day or 200 on the weekends and uh that's during june so it's getting there i'm hoping just to catch up on this one for now at least so i think the most exciting part is done cinderella's all done the rest of it is just scenery and i think that may be why i'm dragging my feet a little bit on that one but we'll get there <laughs> that one uh, my goal for the year is to just finish the row i'm working on and then the rest, the rest, well, all that's left will be the bottom rows. And that that's only half a page, I think, for each one. Like for each five pages across, it's only half a page. The next one that I've got on my pile is Juliet by Tilton Crafts. And here's what it will look like when it's finished. This one is artwork by Takaki. And uh, here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And there it is now. This is another goal that came up for Whip Go in June, is to finish one page. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting in 200 stitches a day and doubling that on the weekends. So, uh, I think I'll get up to about there, just shy of her face. And that will take me to the end of this, this page. So that's what I'm working on there and still loving these colours. I think I like this one more than Cinderella because the colours are just so vibrant. With Cinderella at the moment, all I'm pulling out is greys and light blues and um, it's just very dull colours, whereas this one I keep pulling out bright pinks and bright greens and bright blues so it is a lot more fun to work on just for that reason okay my focus piece i guess that i've made it is templar prophecy and this one is by the by long dog samplers and here's what it will look like when it's finished and here's what it looked like the last time you saw it And my goal for this one is to put in 5,000 stitches a month and that will take me to a finish by the end of the year. I started this on the 1st of January and I'm stitching this one over one on 25 count Lugana in 039 of Silks For You thread. And here's what it looks like now. So I put in my 5,000, I'll just bring it up a little bit. So I'm putting my 5,000 stitches. Sorry, it's not easy to hold. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, I have, I'm up to date with the back stitching. So I've done all that I can based on what I've stitched as far as back stitching goes. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is just here. On the picture, it had J-E-L there. And I didn't realise, when I was stitching it, I didn't even realise they were letters until I kind of took a step back and came back to it and went, oh, they're letters. <laughs> and I thought J-E-L does not apply to me at all. And, of course, that's the designer's initials. So 
I've changed it to LC, which are my initials. Um, I don't, I have, I, I can't say I don't have any middle names. I have three, um, but I don't use them because <laughs> there aren't too many people with my name around, Lorna, and then my surname is quite unusual as well. So um, I don't really use my middle name so much. So I just put in LC and... Um, so that's where it is at the moment still loving this one and the only thing is i don't know if i'm going to manage 5,000 stitches this month because i've got a lot to do just for whip go and that's sort of my priority at the moment um so yeah that's where it is i'll just show you the bottom there so you can see that i've come down a little bit on that side and that's just because the q snaps were already on that side of it and that's yeah it was just easier to keep going down i am using um pattern keeper for this one and it's just easier because there's no page breaks so you can just keep working on it on the part that you're working on regardless of where the page ends but that is page 10 and i've finished pages one to five um page 10 still has a little bit more to go down here so that what but that wasn't my goal my goal was to finish 5000 stitches the only thing with pattern keeper is it doesn't show the back stitching so um i use a different i use uh, my ipad for that one for the back stitching so it means that i do have to come back to it for back stitching but that's okay right now we're up to the mirabilias and like I said, my mirabilia, my mania, I'm, I'm just calling it may um, because of the connotations of mania. Um, but I did do mirabilia may. So I worked on my three seasonal queens. I finished summer queen last year. So I still have uh, the other three seasons. And this one is autumn queen. Uh, I'll be right back. I forgot to bring the pattern, so I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Um, I keep my envelopes with the pictures on them separate to my projects because they, I find they get too tattered in my project bags and I forgot to bring them. So I just thought I'd bring them to show you. So the first one I'm gonna show you is Autumn Queen from Mirabilia. And here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And here she is now and she's my favorite seasonal queen purely because of the colors uh, the fabric is color cascade fabric and it is a 28 count Lugana called rocket queen and I just love her colors um, her dress but also the fabric color I just think that these colors are popping on that so I'm very happy with the way this is turning out um, I had hoped to get at least that whole quarter finished, but it wasn't to be, and that's okay. I'll just keep enjoying it. I probably won't pull this out again this year, though. So that's that one. And this... This one, uh, the Autumn Queen, uses Whisper Thread. And I know that's not a favourite with everyone. Um, I don't mind it too much. I, I did start using two strands of the, of the fabric, of the um, Whisper Thread. Two strands was just wasn't working. It was way too hard to do. So I went down to one thread. One thread is, is working. It doesn't give us great coverage, obviously, but it's a lot easier and it still looks okay. So I, I continued to do that. And um, I just use really short threads, so, uh, short lengths of thread. Okay, the next one is, this is Winter Queen. And here's what she'll look like when she's ready and she's finished and here's where it was the last time you saw it and 
here's where it is now. So I brought down this part of the dress here and that's what I worked on this month. This fabric is also a Colour Cascade fabrics and it's a Colour Cascade fabric and it's called Fairies Wear Boots. This is a 28 count Monaco and it's a beautiful mottled pink. And I think the blues really stand out on it, as well as the whites, which is good. Uh, this queen also uses Whisper Thread. But like I said, I just use one strand and short threads. And it's okay. It's not too bad. And last but not least of the whips is Spring Queen and she will look like that when she's finished and here's what it looked like the last time you saw her and here's where it is now and my goal was to finish the bouquet which i did and i think i did some back stitching as well yeah i've done some back stitching on the bouquet itself this is a 28 count um, lugana and it's a mystery fabric from, also from color cascades i used to be in their fabric of the month and this was one of those uh, that came through one month. Uh, it's basically just a, a purple colour with, it's a light purple, maybe a lilac. It's pretty true. What, you, what you're seeing is pretty true. Um, and it's a mottled colour. So, yeah, so I've still got all the bottom of her to go, which is quite a lot, as you can see. So I'm only up to about there. Um, so this one won't be finished for a long time yet, especially if I'm only going to work on it one week a year. <laughs> Maybe I'll put in a bit more work next year, but I don't think I'm going to have time to bring her out again this year. But I love, really love that bouquet. I love the way it turned out. Really pretty. So that's her. So that's all my whips. I'm going to tidy all this up because there's a bit of a mess in front of me and I will go through uh, what I got from my retreat. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so on a couple of weekends ago, um, six friends of mine and myself uh, spent three nights in a house in Mittagong. We have been doing this since 2018, I believe. So we've done it twice before we had to miss last year because the border the estate borders weren't open and we do have an interstate person um as well as a couple that come from canberra and so this year we were really keen unfortunately the person from interstate couldn't come this year either um but we video called her quite a lot and we spoke to her and she was involved in most of the fun so um, it's a really good time. It's nice and quiet, which is kind of more my type of retreat. Um, not too many people, just a quiet retreat. I can't say quiet because we were quite loud, actually, and we had a lot of fun. Um, stayed up really late. Just a lot of um, games and dancing and singing and, you know, seven women together and... Um, yeah, we all had a great time and there was a little bit of stitching, not as much as you, you would think, but um, there was, we, we had a great time anyway. So that was really good. Um, we did have a sort of, I know it's got nothing to, I know we're nowhere near Christmas, but it was a secret Santa type arrangement. And um, I actually had the same person who had me. So we, we kind of did a swap. Um, so but there were other other people who also brought presents for everyone and um everyone knows who they are that gave me things so i'm not going to go through individually what who gave me what but um i'm just going to go through the whole lot together um there were also chocolates that were that were gifted to me um they've already mostly been eaten the others are kind of the packets have been opened so i'm not going to show you those just um, remember there were chocolates in the pile. Okay, but <laughs> so this was one of the presents. It's a t-shirt, it says Merry Stitchmas. And we all got one of these. Absolutely love it. So 
so that that was really cool and again it hasn't been ironed i'm sorry um okay so i got this piece of fabric it is a linen uh i can't remember what it's called but um yeah it's just a a piece of uh, linen in a neutral color so that will come in handy i'm sure i also received linen and threads linen and threads spring blush in 28 count uh, i think it's an even yeah it's an even weave it looks like a lip garner so that's a beautiful pink as well it's a bit more pink than what it's showing up there yeah it's a bit blown out there but it's a really pretty color and that's big enough for a mirabilia so i'm sure i'll find one to work on on that uh, i also received some threads so this is cottage cottage garden threads uh what's it called milrose this is an australian company uh this one is cascade house and it's color 1515 it doesn't really say what it doesn't actually give a name i don't think but that's really pretty purples and golds in that one uh, this is a nice blue. It's from Brinda Bella Threads. Some of these I've never heard of, but they're really pretty. Um, this one is also hand dyed in Australia. And I can't see a name, but it's number 38. So that's really pretty. It's um, a lot of blues and some greys in that one. And there's one more, Brin another Brinda Bella thread, and this is pinks and greens, and this one doesn't have the number on it. It might have been a one-off, I'm not sure, but there we are. Uh -huh. um, I also got some, some nice scissors. I like these because they're really sharp. They're just rainbow scissors. Um... This is from A Stitch in Time Needle Minder and it's a little hair or rabbit there. I think it's a hair because the longer ears, right? So, um, so well, love needle minders. They always come in handy. I love this too. This is a needle box. So it's a little, it slides, you can put your needles in there. So that will come in handy. Um... This was made for me and it actually has my initial on there so beautiful finishing beautiful little pillow i can actually um display it now that i've shown you and this was something that was found in a gift shop and bought for me and i think my daughter might like this one the little girls all around it so. And like I said, lots of chocolate. Oh, and there was also a $25 gift voucher for Etsy, which I haven't spent yet, but I have been sussing out what's there. Um, then I went to... Uh, so Mittagong has Victoria House Needleworks, which is uh, probably one of the bigger um, stitching shops that Australia has. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, things are falling. <laughs> um, so, like I said, it's probably one of the bigger. I'm not. I don't think it's the biggest, but it is on the bigger side, and it's probably the closest to me and the easiest to get to. So, I just bought some of this. It's 29 count Lugana, which isn't that um, common. I don't think it's more. You'd more likely to find 28 count, but this is 29 count. Actually, it's not Lugana. I think it's called. Brittany or something like that it does have a different name when it gets to 29 count but anyway it's a it's kind of a pale blue I had bought it for my um oh the other thing on this retreat was um we did a round robin two years ago we started 
this round robin um most of them haven't been finished yet i think one has been or a couple have been um so i got to see mine and absolutely loved it it's um still being stitched at the moment um by the ladies and once that's finished it'll, it'll come back to me ladies there's no pressure to finish it i just can't wait to see it again um, but it was stitched on this fabric that I bought from Victoria House Lena Works two years ago when I was there last time. Um, and I just wanted some more because it's really nice fabric. So it's not as soft as Lugana. It's a bit thicker, a bit more stiff, but it's actually really nice to work on. So I bought that. And then Tash the Star Cross Stitcher, her mum has a stitching shop it's actually a quilting shop it's got lots of different fabrics um, but she also sells um, cross stitch charts and fabric uh, the name of the shop is motifs by hand and it's on etsy and i will put a link below and i asked tash if she could bring me a couple of charts and she was very kind and did that and there's the blue flower the gentle rain I'm someone who loves it when it rains so I just really like that and it says how sweet the music of the rain and this one is from Cory Butty Cory I don't know if I've pronounced that pro properly um, it's called Primavera in Tutsa which I believe means spring in a cup and I just thought that was really cute uh, so they, they are from Motifs by Hand, which I will link below. I also purchased a chart from Tilt and Crafts. They, ha they were having a sale for Memorial Day. Um, happy Memorial Day to everyone in the, in the States. And that is, I, I can't remember what it's called, something about Magic Castle or something like that. But um, I will insert it here and put the name of it. So that was one that was highly inspired by my daughter. She she saw that while I was flicking through the website and, oh, mom, can we get that? Um, now, <laughs> I've had a look at it. It's 70 pages long, um, 70 pages of stitching. So I don't know if it, I don't know that it's going to be finished any time in her, during her childhood, but um, I just thought I'll oh, I'll have it. It's it's a nice one it's got different color lots of different colors and i thought it'd be fun to work on even if it even if she grows out of it i think it'll still be nice to kind of work on and and have around so that is i haven't started it yet but it is a long-term project okay that's that's it for haul and stitchy kindness and whips um there is one other thing i wanted to mention and go through uh, my friend Tina from England, um, she her channel is called Simply In Stitches. Hi, Tina. She tagged me in a bucket list tag. Um, and basically you have to, I think it started off in the knitting community. Um, Tina's quite heavily into knitting at the moment. Um, she's still stitching, but she, I think, I think her main love at the moment is knitting. And... Um, someone tagged her in in this bucket list and basically what you have to do is say uh, or give the six projects that you would like to complete or even start uh, before you kick the bucket I guess so um, Tina was ki kindly tagged me I'm gonna tag anyone who wants to participate so I'm not gonna tag anyone specific but anyone who wants to participate please go ahead all you have to do is Give the six charts that you or the six projects that you would like to complete um, in your lifetime i'm just going to pause it here and i will be right back because they're right at the back of this table so i'll be right back so these are all these are all charts that i haven't actually started yet um there are quite a few in my whip pile that i would like to finish before i die but um i just thought it would be more fun to show you ones that you may not have seen since i bought them um the hardest part of this tag was narrowing it down to six there are quite a few that that would have made the cut had there been had i been able to show you more um and i can think of more that i would i may start before these ones so um 
we're just going to go through these six. These are ones that were kind of um, ready at hand and I looked at them and went, oh, yes, I really want to do those. So um, the first one, I think this is the one that I'm really keen to start the most. I still haven't got those threads I've been waiting for. It's called Cardinal Points and it was a collaboration between, hand, uh, between Long Dog Samplers and the Gentle Art Sampler Threads. So I've got some of the colours there um, and I really can't wait to start this one. I think uh, I'll be starting this probably sometime next year and if I don't get the colours soon, I think I'm just going to use what I have in stash. Um, or maybe do a conversion to DMC because I just really, I'm really keen to start it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that one. This is, it's from By the Bay Needle Art and it's called the Tidal River and there's three charts. These can be done as three separate charts or even just one on its own, but if you stitch them together, they all tie in and match up. And I've had these for a while and um, I have the fabric for them here. I don't know what this one is. It's a nice blue fabric. I can't remember. Oh, here we are. I can't remember even buying this, but it's a picture this plus Glacier Lugana, 28 count Lugana. So I'm going to use that one for those when I get around to starting them. So that's one I'm really keen to start as well. The other one is Eliza Bell Cox by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. Really pretty. This one uses Spadage silks and I would like to get the silks. I know it's very expensive. I haven't started kitting it up. I may just do DMC. I think it'll still look okay with DMC. Uh, but it's it's a huge project, but I really, I think it's just really pretty and dainty and it's really lovely. So that's one that I'm going to start as well. Next one is Autumn Quakers, and this is what I mean about charts bending and things bend. when they go into the project bag, they get a bit bent out of shape, and I don't like that. Um, so this is Autumn Quakers by Rosewood Banner, and I'm going to be stitching that on 28 count doubloon, my picture this plus, Lugana, and that's the cord for fabric. And it comes with, or it doesn't come with, you, you buy this separately, but it's suggested that you work with Valdani threads and that's the colourway there. So that's all the colours needed for this project. So the reason I've got that project, that um, chart all together with the kit is just so that I know what the, that fabric and those threads are for. Uh, I have a Mirabilia, I think that's four now, yeah. yeah, that's four, so number five, in no particular order. Um, this isn't actually what the Mirabilia will look like when it's finished, excuse me, itchy nose. Um, this, you can only get it from Casa Sanina, and... It's kind of a mini kit that you buy from there. Um, it's called Arezzo, but I think it's also called Where For Art Thou. Uh, so it's a type of a Juliet pattern. I've, I've seen it stitched and it doesn't look like, it looks, I mean, that's the general idea, but it looks so much nicer than this. I think this is the, the um, this isn't a photo of the stitch, of the stitched up version. I think this is just the, the sketch that Nora Corbett did. So it is a Mirabilia, but it's exclusive to Casa Sanina in Italy. Um, I had looked into it a few years ago and the postage to Australia was prohibitively high. It was, they only had one courier that, that they sent, they used for Australia and it was, it was um, really, really expensive. 
and I just couldn't justify it. But um, both my dad and myself were planning two separate trips to my family in Malta that year. And so I organized for Casa Sanina to send it to my aunt in Malta. And we, we, my dad, I think my dad picked it up from there um, and he brought it back for me. So yeah. And this one, it comes with the beads. So they're the beads that would go on there. It also comes with with that and that's that's also a bead I think it, it dangles from I'm not sure if it dangles from her dress but you can't see it in that picture um, but that comes with it as well so you can't buy this just you can't just buy the chart you have to buy the mini kit is that um, there's also fabric in here but I think I might change the fabric Oh, there's another pack of beads, sorry. Another pack of beads in there. This is quite coarse linen. I think I might change it and use this one for something else. I don't think that would... I think I can make it work differently on, on a different fabric. So... actually quite small so that's the chart is from there to there so it's actually a small chart um, and I think I'm going to need to enlarge it for the sake of my eyes um, so yeah that's that's that one number six is a digital chart that I have and I bought this several years ago but I've been I really it's one of those things I really want to start it I can't wait to start it but something's always there instead um, I can't remember what it's called, but it is a foreign name. So I will, I will put the details here, but this is what it looks like. So they're my six. So like I said, anyone who wants to participate can. Um, it's just called the bucket tag. So anything you want to complete um, in your lifetime. And it's six projects. So it can be anything it can be anything um of course i mainly do cross stitching so that's that's why i've chosen six cross stitch pieces but if you're more of a knitter or a quilter then feel free to use um those projects instead um i haven't really been reading i've just kind of picked up books here and there but haven't really finished anything um an update on my eyes i went to see my specialist last monday and um he said yeah definitely ready for the surgery um at the moment i don't know if you can see it but i've got a little bit of a sty there it's a type of cyst it's not actually a sty but it looks like a sty and i believe it acts like a sty um but uh it's quite common in winter i tend to get them on my eyelid on my upper eyelid but luckily um they said to me that if it was on my upper eyelid, they wouldn't have been able to take proper, proper measurements of my eye for the surgery. So I would have had to come back later. Um, but because it's on the lower eyelid, they were able to do that because um, this is the next eye that, that needs to be operated on. Um, but I have to wait until August because these, these cysts usually take about six to eight weeks or four to six weeks or something. Um, to go away and I'm using warm compresses and he's given me some cream to use on it as well um, it hasn't looked any different since it since it came up so it's I felt it coming up I felt it, it was quite sore at one point um, and then when it came up it kind of just it's fine I don't feel it um, it doesn't cause me any problems um, but he did say he wouldn't be able to operate until it goes away. So he's given me some cream to put on there morning and night. And also um, I use warm compresses throughout the day. So I'm hoping it goes away by August so that I can have the surgery because it's early August. 
and then six to eight weeks after that I'll be able to get proper glasses to, to use um, so I'm really keen to get that process moving and to have it happen um, that's all I had really um, we just had a pretty busy month last weekend my we took my daughter to uh, Featherdale Wildlife Park that's a park it's it's more of like a zoo but um, mainly has native animals to Australia um, so my daughter really enjoyed that uh, she actually received a family voucher for that park for about two years ago for her birthday and we haven't used it yet and it was about to expire so we quickly went last weekend and she had a great time and so did we so it was really good um that's about it uh we have had a busy month like i said um people in melbourne unfortunately they've had another outbreak of covid um so they've been in lockdown for about a week and a half hopefully that will be lifted at the end of this week um but we are thinking of you um we're pretty much we're on a little bit of tenter hooks because they think that one of the one of the people or a couple of the people that caught it may have caught it from New South Wales, but as yet there has been no community transition found in New South Wales, transmission found in New South Wales. So we're a little bit on edge wondering who this um, spreader is that, that hasn't come that hasn't been picked up yet. Um, but more or less our restrictions are kind of eased now we're pretty much back to normal um i'm just hoping that continues especially towards the holidays we tend to get outbreaks just before school holidays and we've got school holidays coming up in about three weeks so hoping that doesn't happen this time um yeah that's about it um i haven't had my vaccine yet i am keen to have it but there's still um our vaccine rollout has been quite slow and I think that's why Melbourne's in a bit of trouble because um, most of the people there weren't vaccinated. Um, but I'm keen and as soon as it's available to my age group, I will be there and I will be getting it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my update. I don't think I have anything else. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around this long, this one is a little bit longer of a video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting and liking and I hope everyone has a great month and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.